The men are going to come forward now and they're going to distribute the bread and the cup and we'll celebrate the Lord's death. As you take those uh, elements, just hold on to them. We'll receive them together in a moment. When you think about those who are in the Lord and with the Lord, how long have they enjoyed already the things we've sung about, the things we've read about this morning? You may have loved ones that have gone to be with Christ, absent from the body, present with the Lord, waiting the resurrection. How long has Paul enjoyed Christ and the Apostle John and Isaiah and Moses? Very soon, you and I, you and I will have been longer there than we've been here. This life is so short. In heaven, we will celebrate the Lord's death, though in a different way than we do here. Here we proclaim his death until he comes. And we do so as sinners. They are not so. We will rejoice with all debts canceled, but also the presence of sin finally and utterly removed. We will be unable to sin there. Here we come to the cross again acknowledging our weakness and frailty, confessing our sins to him and finding him to be just and the justifier of the ungodly, to be faithful and just and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This ceremony is not magical, it's just a reminder. The bread and the juice, they are symbols of the death of Christ, his blood spilt and his body crushed under the wrath of God. We drink and we eat as believers in Jesus Christ to remember what he has done for mercy, not to earn it. And we do this in remembrance of him. This little symbolic meal is for believers in Jesus Christ only. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, don't eat, don't drink. If you are in Jesus Christ, you don't have to be a member of Grace Bible Church. We're glad that you're with us. Eat and drink in remembrance of what he has done for you, forgiven Christian. But do so with an examination of your own heart. Even now as I'm speaking, think, think back in your own heart. Are there things to confess to the Lord? Are there things to bring before him in prayer that, that you know aren't right? And then rejoice in the cross work of Christ which has expunged them all. Revel again in your forgiveness and your belonging to God through Christ. That's what this is about. We proclaim his death and its benefits to us as believers until he returns. One day we'll celebrate his death in a whole new way. Was there a tray that came up here? Did I miss one? Okay. Okay. This is awkward. <laughs> Josh is going, oh no. He was talking, I didn't want to interrupt. No, 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 Matt, stay there. Okay, yeah, can we get a tray? Let's just, uh, we, we don't usually do it this way, so pardon the awkward moment. If there are a few more, thank you, Steve. Appreciate that. Uh, no, we need a tray, we need a few more. How many more do we need? Yeah, they're not abstaining from the Lord's table because they're unbelievers. <laughs> we're going to do this together, so we're going to do it together. Thanks for your patience. And I'll read these words from 1 Corinthians 11. On the night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed... He took in his hands bread. And then we had given thanks, he broke it and he said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after the supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's drink together. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, 
you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.